Hello everyone and welcome back to the World Chess Championship match between Yanni Pomnashi and Ding Lira and we are in game 12 and uh, it is uh, uh, incredible. It is absolutely incredible that uh, Jan is leading by a full point and the game that just happened, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, I'm once again jealous uh, because what you will now experience will, I don't know, it, it will completely change your, your day, your week, your month, it will be, uh, well life-changing and uh, for those of you who uh, don't, don't want to see too many variations who just are interested in the moves because I have no idea how many lines I'm going to cover here uh, there will be a section uh, uh, you know in, in in the chapters you can check it out where I will just show the moves but uh, let's check out the game now uh, and see what happened here so uh, I know you guys uh, enjoy me uh, showing uh, who, who who played the first move so this gentleman here uh, Dima, uh, Dimash Kudaibergen uh, he's a world-renowned Kazakh singer a composer and the multi-instrumentalist whatever whatever that is I guess he can handle multiple instruments at once or maybe not at once but okay uh, and he made the the first ceremonial move um, uh, of game 12 so there you have it both players eager to get on with the show uh, and Ding once again opens with pawn to d4 now uh, we've already seen what happened uh, in one game where Ding played pawn to f4 that, that game 6 where Ding went for the uh, London system and it was an absolute masterpiece uh, but here we have knight to f6 knight to f3 d5 and now everyone was thinking okay will Ding actually repeat the London system uh, no he plays pawn to e3 he goes for the call system uh, and this is now uh, very very different it's a quiet opening uh, but it can also get very loud as you'll see later on so here uh, a nice principled c5 and now knight b to d2 this is somewhat rare uh, but it has been used by an incredibly strong player uh, a former world champion Vladimir Kramnik uh, was known to play this um, uh, knight b to d2 line so c captures on d4 we have e captures and queen to c7 again uh, sort of an uh, offbeat idea by Nepo uh, c3 and now bishop to d7 and already maybe not a completely new move but uh, it hasn't been seen in any uh, top tier games there is one game between Gustafsson and Yusupov that ended in a draw uh, but uh, other than that, uh, no uh, notable games. Uh, so here, uh, the idea probably is that uh, as uh, everyone was pretty bedazzled by this bishop to d7 move, uh, the idea is that if you play bishop g4, then white will play bishop to b5 check. So by playing bishop to d7, uh, Fabiano Caruana said that maybe this is uh, sort of waiting for white to develop the, the light square bishop somewhere else, and then you can always put the bishop on g4 later on, and maybe the loss of a tempo will not be such a big deal. So bishop to d3, knight to c6, and now castles. And indeed, uh, uh, Nepo now goes for bishop to g4. Uh, we have rook to e1 by d pawn to e6 and now just a nice knight to f1 uh, now you can challenge the bishop later on maybe h3 bishop to h5 maybe the knight comes to g3 and so on pretty standard stuff here so here bishop to d6 and now bishop to g5 putting pressure on the uh, knight here and uh, Nepo just castles here and uh, well you could also consider castling queenside Nepo castles kingside and he once again invites Ding to uh, mess up his pawn structure Ding already tried that once and Nepo completely crushed him if you remember he uh, doubled the rooks on the g file and Ding could not survive the attack and the situation on the clock here uh, an hour and 25 for Ding and an hour and 38 for Nepo so Nepo again uh, playing much much faster uh, and here bishop captures an f6 you could consider some other moves like pawn to h3 or maybe just a nice waiting move uh, but Ding goes for it he wants to open up the black king and go for the attack g captures on f6 and knight to g3 and now uh all sorts of uh, uh, things can go wrong here. Uh, here in the game, the immediate f5 was played, but let's say Nepo plays something like king to h8. Then you run into lines like pawn to h3, bishop captures, queen captures, and if f5, you can even play knight captures on f5. And after, let's say, captures, captures, threatening checkmate, f6, defending checkmate, and now you can play some like rook to e6. You don't even have to capture the d5 pawn right away. You can now threaten this pawn. You're threatening this pawn. You still have this uh, pressure on h7. You can prepare to bring the other the rook into the game so it's a pretty pretty crazy position and you, you you've grabbed uh, plenty of pawns for that sacrifice piece you will grab another one 
so perfectly fine. Uh, Nepo does not like the look of this. He plays f5 right away. And now we have pawn to h3 and he goes bishop captures on f3. Uh, the problem is uh, he made a little pause here. And the pause was he was calculating uh, pawn to f4. And it's a fine move to make. Uh, point being that after, uh, let's say you play h captures on uh, g4 and captures on g3, there's f captures on g3 and bishop captures on g3. Uh, the problem is after this f4 move, uh, Ding doesn't have to go into this capture fest. He can just play knight to f1. Okay, now he does vacate the h5 square for the bishop, but now let's say knight 1 to h2. And it's, um, you know, it's fine for both. Uh, Nepo loses this diagonal, but he does get to keep this bishop on this diagonal. So it's a, it's a trade-off. Uh, but Nepo decided to trade immediately. He played bishop captures on f3, queen captures, and now knight to e7, preparing to bring the knight to g6. We have knight to h5 by Ding. King to h8 and now pawn to g4. Ding goes for it. He's going all out. He needs a win with the white pieces to equalize the match. And then uh, the two uh, games that are remaining will uh, give us uh, uh, the, the new world champion. And uh, how can Nepo continue here? Uh, there are many uh, good candidate moves. Uh, I will just show you one. Uh, knight to g6. In the game, Nepo played rook to g8. But knight to g6 is so rich. Uh, for example, g captures on f5. Knight to h4 attacks the white queen. Queen e3, and now rook to g8. Check king to h1 and rook to g2. Uh, what is uh, what is happening here? Look at this. Queen to h6 going uh, uh, for queen to f6. Check. Now rook to h2 with check. King g1, you bring the other rook into the game as well. King to f1, and now bishop e7. You stop queen to f6, and black is just winning. Uh, there's um, uh, no good way to uh, to handle this. Uh, th this is not a forced line entirely, uh, but it was a pretty pretty good try. Now the problem is if pawn to f6, you have knight to f5, attack the queen, and once the queen moves, you want to trade queens. Now you just bring the bishop back, bishop to d6, and once the queen moves, because there are no good squares, now you just play rook g to g2, and this is now resigns for white, uh, because whatever you play, let's say bishop captures, there's this nasty queen to c4 check, and uh, that's a huge, a huge problem. Let's say bishop to d3, rook captures on f2, check. If king to g1, you're just going to play rook captures on d2. And at the end of the day, uh, white will be up um, uh, to, uh, to uh, not, not too much material, uh, but the white king will be uh, c completely lost here. You will uh, soon get checkmated or you will suffer severe mater material loss. Uh, so that's um, uh, kind of the uh, the option of going with knight to g6. But it's not uh, completely forced. However, it would be hard to defend. Nepo instead goes rook to g8. King uh, Ding plays king to h1. Uh, and now knight to g6. So similar, not quite the same. Uh, and bishop to c2. A very weird move by Ding. And uh, it can be explained by, uh, by uh, the potential of black playing f4. The problem is if you play rook to g1, let's say. And now comes knight to h4. Where do you move the queen? You can't move the queen queen to d3, you're going to play queen e3, and now maybe f4, and this is very annoying. So that's why Ding first played uh, bishop to c2, and now if that happens, he will always have the d3 square for his queen. So uh, it does happen, knight to h4, queen to e3, and now Nepo decides against pawn to f4. Now the queen coming to d3 could in fact be pretty good. Uh, so, uh, and, but it's not, it's nothing spectacular. Okay, you're threatening checkmate. Rook, uh, rook g6 will stop checkmate very nicely. Uh, but uh, instead, after this queen to e3 move, we have rook to g6 right away by Nepo. Rook to g1 and only now pawn to f4. Now it's not uh, such a big deal. Queen to d3. And now queen to e7. Here, there are many, uh, many lines, many forcing lines. Indeed, uh, I will just show uh, pawn to f5 because it's uh, kind of relevant uh, for the game. Uh, now, how do you, how do you deal with this let's say pawn to f3 rook 8 to g8 very nice by black and now let's say rook 8 to f1 okay uh the the uh, white can hold but it's uh again very very good for black uh, but after queen to d3 nepo played queen to e7 and now comes rook 8 to e1 uh, by uh, by Ding. The problem is you could play g5. It looks like a really scary move. Of course, the rook cannot capture due to checkmate. And uh, how do you handle this? Uh, the problem is there's pawn to h6. And now it's actually perfectly fine. G captures, rook captures. Now you are guarding checkmate from here. Uh, and if bishop to d1 to, to guard the knight, then you play rook to g8. And black is, black is extremely uh, well prepared here. Black will be 
well, even much better. So instead, after queen to e7, rook a to e1 by Ding, and now comes queen to g5 by Nepo. Uh, now he has all sorts of ideas. Maybe pawn to f3, maybe the knight comes to g2, maybe the knight just moves, then the queen comes to h4, then queen captures an h3 at some point. Uh, so looking very scary. Uh, Ding played uh, pawn to c4, uh, and now D captures on c4. We have queen to c3, aligning the queen nicely with the king on this diagonal, uh, and Nepo just played pawn to b5. And everyone started celebrating here. This was a moment of true celebration for the chess world because this is a uh, sort of a, a double exclamation mark move. Uh, when you make a really good move, you get an exclamation mark. When you <laughs> make a spectacular move, you get two exclamation marks. Uh, and this is um, what Nepo was awarded by the interface. And uh, the point is now that uh, d5 uh, doesn't really do all that much. Pawn to e5 and uh, you, you have no problems here. You defend the c4 pawn. Uh, there are no uh, issues here. And you don't really care about bishop captors and g6. Now, here, pawn to a4 was played. Of course, Ding wants to challenge this structure. And now, uh, again, everyone was expecting pawn to a6. You're kind of used to seeing uh, this idea when b5 is played. You challenge it with a4, pawn to a6 is played. And now after, let's say, captures, captures, and b3, rook to c8. And now, let's say, uh, captures, captures, queen to b3. Uh, and now uh, the game just continues. Um, uh, you can play queen to d3. It'd be great if you could, but queen d5 check and uh, you just lose. There's no defense against this. You don't uh, have a good cover up here. And if you block with something like queen to e4, then just rook captures and c c2 uh, will blunder uh, a piece so uh, so there's that however nepo played pawn to b4 here he started playing very quickly and it's uh, uh you know an admirable idea just giving up the c4 pawn like that the point is queen captures on c4 and now nepo plays rook 8 to g8 and he was definitely onto something it's just that rook 8 to g8 is not that onto something move that uh, i was referring to the the omg line is actually knight to f3 uh, not because you're going after material. The, the point is that after queen to c6, attacking the knight and the rook here, there's knight captures on e1, queen captures on a8, and now uh, after rook to g8, challenging the queen, queen goes back to e4, threatens checkmate, uh, uh, not uh, uh, right, away, but, uh, right away, but knight captures on c2, eliminates checkmate, queen captures, and now queen to h4, going after the pawn here. Queen to d3 defending and now pawn to f5. It's it's a really big, huge, uh, uh, you know, uh, line, but uh, uh, it just works. Uh, queen to f3, f captures, rook captures on g4, and now rook captures on g4. Uh, queen captures on g4, you trade everything, and it seems like you just traded down into an equal endgame, but there's pawn to b3. And this is the move that you have to see all the way back in order to find the winning idea. Now there is no defense against bishop to a3. Absolutely stunning. Knight to f6, bishop to a3, and that's it. You can stop the pawn. It's not that you can't stop the pawn. It's just that black will take too much material while you are, uh, you know, on your on your way to, to stop the pawn. Knight captures on b3, bishop captures on f2. You're up two pawns, of course, uh, completely winning for black. So knight to f3 uh, was the move that uh, should have been celebrated here, but rook a to g8 was played by Nepo, uh, and now Ding plays queen to c6. Queen to d3, a uh, much safer choice, but he goes for queen to c6 he wants to keep an eye on this diagonal now stopping any knight to f3 ideas uh, but now uh, nepo played bishop to b8 and again a uh, critical line to consider is knight to f5 uh, i will just show it because it's um, it's uh, remarkable how do you continue the game uh, if you play something like bishop captures on f1 then you get e captures on f5 and now after let's say rook to e8 okay you trade uh, first you capture on g4 and after rook captures on g8 king captures queen to e8 with check bishop to f8 and now queen to e5 you offer a queen trade but queen h4 and uh, chances are uh, white will not be able to survive this it's a very very difficult position to play maybe with you know uh, engine precise play but not very likely uh, the other thing is if you don't capture here uh, what are your other options you can play rook to d1 uh, just uh, you know wait, wait and see what happens but then the, the immediate queen to h4 uh, so you can't really do this. If queen to f3, there is knight to g3 check, blocking the queen's path to the defense of the h3 pawn. And now if rook captures, uh, if, f ca if uh, f captures, of course, then you just play queen captures on h3. So here f captures on g3, let's say bishop captures on g6, queen captures on h3 with check, king to g1, even capture on f2 with check, king captures, and now, uh, sorry, uh, uh, king captures, now queen captures on f3 with check, king captures, and now f captures on g6. Uh, leaves you with this position uh being up upon so knight to f5 uh 
great for black however the continues but uh nepo played rook to uh, bishop to b8 and now we have queen to b7 here uh, i'm just going to show one other very very impressive line because uh here uh, instead of queen to b7 ding had the uh, option of going for bishop captures on g6 and the point it's so strong is not because you you win material this game stopped being about to material a long long time ago the point is that after h captures on g6 there's d5 you open up uh, uh, this uh, dark diagonal and now there's a uh, no, no good move here if you play queen captures on d5 you just trade because you are already uh, up material captures captures let's say knight to f6 and white is up uh, too much material you, you're, you're up the exchange you're going to collect the pawns uh, this is game over uh, uh, the other thing after d5 let's say you play e captures on d5 uh, knight to f6 that's the star move and now the rook uh, will be uh, uh, just harassed rook to f8 queen c5 attacks the rook rook to d8 queen to e7 and now uh, you, you move the rook you lose the f7 pawn and the black's position collapses uh, but okay uh, both of them are playing very quickly they are uh, getting lower and lower on time uh, Ding played uh, queen to b7 went for the f7 pawn and now rook to h6 by nepo uh just uh inviting ding to capture that uh, pawn on f7 but you can't really do it if you if you capture it there's no follow-up there's no threat here and knight to f3 still exists so instead after this uh, rook to h6 move uh, we have bishop to e4 by ding just stabilizing the position now gaining more control over this diagonal keeping the keeping an eye on the knight and the situation on the clock is 23 minutes for ding and 35 sec uh, uh, minutes for nepo minutes uh, so here rook to f8 uh, nepo just defends the the pawn here even though again the uh, tricky move was pawn to f3 um, uh, I know I'm showing a lot of lines here, but there, it's such a rich position. Like pawn to f3, if queen captures on f7, now you play knight to g2. You go after the rook, and now white must part with the rook. The problem is if you move the rook somewhere, let's say rook c1, knight f4, and you cannot defend this position. Now uh, the, the white will no longer be able to defend along the dh the file, and that's it. Even if bishop captures on f3, you're going to capture on h3, and it's just terrible, terrible for white. Uh, but instead, after bishop to e4, uh, rook to f8 was played nepo just defends the f7 pawn remember nepo is still leading the match he just needs a draw he doesn't want to overcomplicate if ding wants to burn time to uh, find the winning idea he can do so here uh, queen captures on b4 ding just co just collects a pawn and now if uh, nepo doesn't have some sort of a checkmate uh, ding will just even push b4 b5 a5 b6 create a pass pawn and um, you know could pose uh, more problems so here queen back to d8 uh, and now comes queen to c3. The problem is if, if d5 right away and you really want to play this move, then e5 closes this and then f5 comes at some point. So it's very strong. Uh, by playing queen to c3, you're just waiting for Nepo to make a move and you're sort of inviting him to play f5. If he plays f5, you're going to play bishop to c6 and then d5 will be... Uh, sort of a, a problem uh, so after queen to d8 like I said queen to c3 was played now comes knight to g6 by nepo 18 minutes here on the clock for for ding uh, 24 minutes for Jan uh, and ding plays bishop back to g2 here f3 again you you want to stop a black's f3 attempt at some point but uh, ding played bishop to g2 he just wants to add more support here uh, and Jan now plays the immediate queen to h4 we have rook to e2 uh, guarding the f2 pawn and now uh now comes the the magic moment the situation on the clock is very uh, tricky it's like 15 minutes for ding like 24 minutes for nepo uh and here you could consider a lot of moves you can consider a move like rook to g8 you could consider a move like queen to g5 uh you could consider a move like bishop to d6 so all uh basically waiting moves to see what ding will uh try try and come up with but the move that nepo played uh is um impossible to explain as especially since this is a classical game this is a world chess championship match and this is something uh this is what, what you would call if it was not a world chess championship match what you would call a classic nepo move he played pawn to f5 and now uh it's it's a move that was great in pretty much every position so far and even winning in some but here it just wanders the game away uh, so feel free to pause the video and try and spot what nepo missed uh, while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, 
maybe maybe the, the greatest blunder ever in a World Chess Championship match. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook captures on E6. This is what Nepo missed. He completely blundered the pawn here. And it's not just that he blundered the pawn. He's now down two pawns, but his position is completely dead. He has no counterplay. He has no attack. He has no follow-up. Uh, he has no answer to pawn to D5. This is uh, completely unplayable. And basically, Jan spent uh, 20 minutes here just waiting, uh, you know, uh, probably preparing for uh, for a press conference, you know, thinking about all the questions that they will ask him, how to explain, how how to calm down, how not to maybe be overly rude, uh, because this is uh, this is pure pain. We've seen pain uh, in in this World Chess Championship. We've seen pain in other World Chess Championships, uh, but this is I don't know. This is pure pain. This is like uh, from from winning to equal to sort of winish to equalish to like one of the worst blunders you, you could ever commit. Uh, and in fact, it was in this position on move 35 that Jan Nepomneshi resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. There is no coming back from this. There is no reply on, uh, to d5, whatever you play. Let's say pawn to f3, you challenge the bishop here, just d5 check. And if bishop to e5, you attack the queen, not a problem. Rook captures on e5. And if let's say f captures on g2 check, you even just capture. It, it's, you know, not a problem. You, you're threatening to move the rook for some nasty discovery. So king the g8 and now rook to e6 yeah or pretty much any other move any move uh, is winning here for white this is not some sort of a uh, you know exclusive winning line this is just moving pieces because e every move is winning here let's say you play rook to f7 you have to stop checkmate uh but just rook to e8 with check now again if you move the rook it's checkmate so you have to uh block with the knight let's say knight to f8 now comes g captures on f5 check and the black king is out of squares now you're gonna have to start giving even more material and this is just sad to watch this is really sad and i you know I, I'm very, very sad for Nepo that uh, it came to this and then uh, and that he for the third time in the match blundered his uh, one point lead. But I'm also very happy for Ding that he was able to bounce back. And what this means for the match is that either we get uh, one more decisive game and then another decisive game. And then we go into uh, rapid tie breaks, maybe even blitz tie breaks uh, or, uh, you know, we just get to do calm games and then we still go into tie breaks because whoever becomes the champion uh although i i would want the world Ch uh, classical chess championship to be decided in a classical match you know uh, over the course of let's say 14 classical games i wouldn't mind an extra day of uh you know uh, some some rapid chess uh, as uh, the, 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 those games I believe will be uh, absolutely spectacular. Uh, and here uh, I, I also have this. This is Nepo after he made that rook captures an e6 move. He basically made it left the board, and then only when after, when he came back he saw what he did, and he couldn't believe it. Uh, one of the possibilities is that uh, because of this rook captures a, 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 an e6 move, maybe he was considering a move like queen g5 uh, or uh, after this f5. Maybe he was considering queen g5 and then maybe after b4 now pawn to f5 but now uh, it's a little bit different now it's not the same position maybe this is something he was calculating let's say rook captures on e6 now f captures on g4 and it's much 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 different if pawn to d5 check then bishop to e5 you uh, the uh, position is sufficiently defended and it's actually black who is winning here so maybe this is something that uh, he was um, you know uh, discussing in his mind and then he thought maybe as he was really blitzing it out he was really just make a move get out out of the board come back make a move get out of the board maybe he thought he was in this line in, in the queen g5 line and then uh, you know if if uh, a move happens then uh pawn to f5 then it makes sense then the e6 pawn is off limits but that was not the case the, the reality is that uh, uh the, the queen is still on h4 he played f5 and that's it uh, so yeah, uh, this is the the clip i wanted to show you this is nepo after he made the move uh you know just pure pain pure pain there is no other way to describe it and he was pretty much like this for some 20 minutes so it was really really hard to watch uh but yeah uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Game 12 of the World Chess Championship match between Yanni Pomnici and the Ding Lira. And Ding now equalizes the match. And now the score is 6-6. Six to six, uh, And we get uh, we, we once again get a match. And uh, I mean, I, I, I'm just happy. I know everyone is both happy and sad that Magnus is not playing. It's sort of a... Uh, mixed feeling situation because you know you want Magnus to be playing but also you want to see games <laughs> like this uh, so you know it's a it's a trade-off 
Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank ABCs of Chess for Kids, Barry McMurdoch, Alec Rosemoon, uh, Kim Tori Jensen, and Jack Obeid for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the World Chess Championship match until it finishes. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon. Uh, and have an excellent rest of your day. And also, yeah, I forgot about um, uh, just the moves. So now for those of you who don't really have the time to check out the game, these are the moves. Uh, it was the call system. Uh, Jan played this uh, queen to c7 line, which is somewhat rare. Uh, we had this position. Uh, Jan allowed his uh, pawn structure to be doubled. Captors, captors, and captors. Ding went for the attack. Rook to g8. Uh, uh, this is, okay, all very standard stuff. Just pushing f4. Now the rook can't move because of checkmate on h7. Uh, uh, and here, uh, Nepo played this spectacular b5 move, which is a double exclamation mark move. a4, now comes a pawn to b4, uh, queen captures, and here we have this beautiful position where after bishop to e4 and rook to f8, uh, you get this position, bishop g2, queen h4, rook, and now pawn to f5, and with pawn to f5, in mean, this position, which can still be played in many other ways, many, many different ways, Nepo played pawn to f5, and he completely blundered. Uh, Ding played rook captures on e6, uh, and he was in this position that Jan resigned because there is no counterplay. Whatever he does, uh, just loses, let's say, f3. You open up this diagonal, uh, threaten check, and now, well, let's just say anything now. Checkmate is being threatened, and now you just play something like this. You open up a check, and black resigns. There are no more squares for the king. You have to start giving up material. So that's the short version. If you, by any chance, have the time for the longer version, I do recommend it. Go to the beginning of the video. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.